When people talk about COD Zombie speedrunning, there's always two maps that get brought up for very good reasons. Shadows of Evil, a unique test of skill and exploitation of the mechanics within, featuring game-breaking skips with the beast mode. SOE has become famous for its optimization of not just the strat, but also the world record, making getting a good time on there one of the best feats in zombie speedrunning. The other map that people talk about, Origins, probably one of the most iconic maps in COD Zombies history, and just like SOE, it features numerous game-breaking exploits to skip steps and optimize the easter egg speedrun as much as possible. This video will teach you how to speedrun Black Ops 3 Origins like a world record player. You revived me. If you want to see more videos like this, then please subscribe and make sure to like the video, as it's a great indicator of what you guys want to see. And let's get into it. Before we load into the map, we once again want to make sure that we have a few things set up. For the gobble gums you'll be using, we want to take raindrops, extra credit, nukes, perkaholic, and self-medication. Now, the reason we use self-medication will become more apparent when we get further into the run, and it's instrumental to the strat. In terms of weapon kits, we don't exactly need anything, so just choose whatever suits you. Just be aware that we'll likely be using the M8A7 and the VMP throughout parts of this run, so make sure that we have attachment set up for both of them. Before we get into game, I'll explain some extremely important information that you'll need to know for this run. Knowing how robots work and how snow rounds work will be extremely important for this run, so I'll go over both in detail now. You can only get ice staff parts when it's snowing, I'm sure you guys already know this, but snow rounds come at certain times. The possible snow rounds that you'll be playing for are on rounds 3, 4 and 5. You are not guaranteed round 3 snow at all, and it's a chance that you get this. You are guaranteed either 4 or round 5 snow, however you can get both 4 and 5 snow if you are fortunate enough. In terms of digs, you cannot get the spawn or mid ice part on your first dig in that area. For every dig that you don't get the ice part, you're more likely to get it from your next dig. This happens when you dig even when it isn't snowing, so make sure that when it isn't snowing, you are digging everything you see. Robots will start spawning at one minute and will continue to spawn every two minutes from that point, meaning robots will come at one minute, three minutes, five minutes, etc. Before the door to no man's land is open, you can only get four, the spawn robot, and Odin, the middle robot. When you get a robot once, you cannot get that robot again on the next cycle. This means that if you get four at one minute, you cannot get four again at three minutes, unless the door to no man's land isn't open, but that's pretty rare. Trios, where all three robots spawn at once, will come every four rounds, or every cycle from completion of the Ascend from Darkness step until you rain fire. Any robot foot is possible on trios regardless of the previous cycle of robots. Every trios you get will push the timing of the next cycle of robots back by 10 seconds. This means that if you get trios at 3 minutes, your next cycle of robots will spawn in at 5.10. This stacks throughout the game. Finally, robots are decided 20 seconds before they spawn. This means that if you are on round 3 and end the round at 2.41 for example, your next robot will be a single robot despite you being on round 4. This also means that if you end round 4 before 440, you will completely skip the round 4 trio cycle. Just before we start, it's important to note that there isn't just one route that you play on Origins, as there are numerous ways you can do it. I'll explain three different ways that you can play prior to grabbing the wind staff base on your robots, and also how to route Origins with and without tank skips. I'm also going to assume that you know how to upgrade the staffs, so this will not teach you the puzzles as you can learn them without this, and just by playing through and using images online. Finally, it's very important that you do not switch out your Mauser, and also make sure that you know the order of your weapons, i.e. what your Mule Kick weapon is. The easiest way to do this is by only grabbing a third weapon when you pick up the Ice Staff in the run, making sure that your Ice Staff will be your third weapon. Why we do this will become apparent later in the run. The very start of the run will always be the same. Spawn in, grab the Brain for the Maxis Drone, spin the Spawn Dial twice, and hit Gum. We're looking for raindrops or extra credit here. Get your gum and start gem 1. If you got raindrops, simply pop one and nuke the round at the round time being 18.65 seconds to end round 1. If you start with credit, 
throw grenades in this window, go down to the spawn area and kill everything you see. Then on your way to the gen 3 door, grab the double points out of the reward box and end the round. Since we always go to gen 3 first, we'll just grab the shovel on our way there. As explained earlier, we cannot get the ice piece on our first dig, so dig the dig spot in the gen 3 trench on our way there. When we get to Gen 3, turn it on and start hitting gum. We want to try and get nukes. If we already had rain, then use it to end round 2 whilst hitting gum. If we started with credit, then keep hitting gum until we get nukes or raindrops, so that we can end the round. Finish the generator and round 2, and head to generator 2. Here will be our next reset condition of the run. Whilst turning on generator 2, start looking for your robot. If it's Odin, the middle robot, then this is pretty much a reset. If it's 4, the spawn robot, look for which foot it is. You should always have time to finish the gen and clear the tank station of all its collectibles before getting to the robot foot. What we want here is the ice disc, the G-Strike tablet, and also spinning the dial for the lightning staff. If it's gen 3 foot, it might be a bit tighter to make, but you should always make it. What we do with round 3 depends on the weather. If it is already snowing on round 3 then we can stay on round 3 and dig in spawn to get the ice piece. If it is raining slash no weather on round 3 then we need to end the round to try and get round 4 snow. Not getting round 3 or round 4 snow is another reset since we won't be able to get the spawn ice piece. Leaving gen 2 slash 3 we should have all of these things. The 4 slash spawn robot wind piece, the spawn ice piece, the ice disc and the g-strike tablet. Head to no man's land and go straight to the mound digging up any digs that you see on the way there. You want to be digging as much as possible regardless of the weather in order to give yourself a higher chance of getting a mid ice piece. It's very important that if we are on round 4, we do not kill any zombies. We will need the round 4 zombies for the G-Strike tablet later. Once you get to the mound, collect the gramophone and go to gen 5. Obviously grabbing the black disc if you come across it. Turn on Gen 5, and whilst doing this, you could spend your time hitting gum and making sure that you have 1. Money, 2. Perks, and 3. If you're not already on Round 4, making sure that you nuke after 2 minutes and 40 seconds so that we do not get trios on Round 4 as explained earlier. This allows us to get either Odin or Freya as our next robot instead of potentially getting 4 again on trios. Now, depending on what robots we get here, we will slightly change the way that we play. The end goal is the same, and the times, assuming all goes well, will all generally be the same, unless you get the most optimal situation. What you will play is what's called as a 3 cycle, a 4 cycle, or a 5 cycle. All this means is the number of robots it takes for you to get all three of the win parts, and I'll explain each situation individually. First, I'll start with the best and most optimal situation, a 4 cycle. Although we play each cycle slightly differently depending on the robots we get, the start and end goal will generally always be the same. After finishing Gen 5 and taking note of what robot is coming, we'll head over to the church and once again digging any dig spots we see, trying to get the mid piece. If it is not snowing and there are dig spots that are not in the mud, I like to save these to try and get it on round 5 when it will be snowing. Otherwise, dig any digs that are on the mud. When we get to church, Freya, the church robot, will be likely stepping. Go inside of the robot and get the Wind piece. If it is not Freya and you are playing for a 4 cycle, this is fine as you can still get Freya as our third robot. After you exit Freya, go and place the gram in the ice tunnel and come straight out. You should have a lot of zombies spawned in to fill your G-Track tablet. You're looking to get at least 12 zombies in here but you usually find yourself getting around 15. The tablet altogether takes 20. Get your kills and start gen 6. If it is snowing on round 4, make sure you dig and get the church ice piece before ending round. If you already have the church ice piece or it isn't snowing, end the round ASAP. Get the fire piece from the gen and go into the ice portal to get the ice stone. Every time we enter the crazy place, make sure you start opening the portal to leave as soon as you get there, as most of the time we'll be going in and going straight out. Grab the gramophone from the ice tunnel and go and finish your first 20 kills for the G-Strikes. If you do not have Freya yet, this is your time to get it. Otherwise, grab your tablet, take the drop down in church, and if and only if you are doing the tank skip strategies, send the tank to Gen 2. If you do not plan on doing tank skips, then do not send the tank. I'll explain how to do these later as they are quite hard, but there are strategies without tank skipping, although they are slower. I forgot to mention before, but leaving church, make sure that you have 1. Picks up the fire disc, and 2. Spam the dial in the upstairs of the church. Just as a general precursor here, throughout this next period to when we build the wind staff, 
We want to be focusing on our round ends and trying to get to round 7 by the time we leave the mound with the wind staff. Keep this in mind during this next period. Head to the mound and get the mid ice piece if you do not have it yet. Depending on your time here, you may turn the dials or you may skip them. The reason being is that we still need Odin for the wind staff and in some cases we will be fast enough to build the ice staff and do the ice staff puzzle in the crazy place and still be able to catch Odin after we have done this. The general timestamp I leave myself to be able to do this is to build the ice staff at 6.45. If I'm able to build the ice staff at 6.45 or below that then I will always skip the dials in the mound in order to do the ice puzzle and catch the robot. If you aren't this fast then it's not the end of the world. Instead of doing the ice puzzle before getting the robot, you can do things such as placing the gram in the wind tunnel and doing gen 4 before getting the robot and doing the ice puzzle after. So build the ice staff and remember to pick up the gramophone in the mound when you leave and bring it to the wind tunnel. Whilst we are there, we will grab the windstone and complete the ice puzzle. When we leave the crazy place, grab the gramophone and catch Odin as he is stepping around the gen 4 area. We should now have all three wind pieces. If you are doing tank skips, then do gen 4 right here and shoot the tombstones while you're on the generator. If you are not doing tank skips then you can skip the generator and shoot the tombstones whilst going to the mound. To shoot the gen 2 gravestone from the mound stand around here. You can aim down sights with a gun to line up your shot beforehand and find a gravestone. Turn the dials in the mound if you haven't already and shoot the ice orb and finally build the wind staff. A 5 cycle will be played extremely similar to a 4 cycle, except there's one different. You don't get Odin as your 4th robot. Assuming that we are fast enough, we are able to finish Gen 4 after doing the ice puzzle and then run to Gen 2. Making sure that we have a full round very quickly, we can fill the G-Strikes right here. If you have a raindrops, you can use insta-kills, otherwise the VMP is very useful here by shooting one bullet at a zombie and then knifing them. If you are fast enough, you should be able to complete G-Strikes and then still catch Odin as the fifth robot. After getting the wind piece from Odin, you will be in the same situation as a 4 cycle, except you will be slightly slower on time, but you will have G-Strikes done, so the time actually evens out. Simply go down to the mound and build the wind staff. A 3 cycle. Again, we played a whole thing very similar to a 4 and a 5 cycle, except from Gen 5 we get Odin as our second cycle of robots. After getting the wind piece from Odin, we will go to church as normal and fill our G-Strikes just like a 4 cycle. The main goal here is to get Freya as the third robot whilst having as much done as possible. The order that you do these things is very odd and will generally just be up to you on what feels best. As long as you get your kills for G-Strikes on round 4, you should be good to catch Freya maybe after going into the crazy place or after doing Gen 6, etc. Once you get Freya and have your G-Strike tablet, you can continue through as if it was a 4 cycle like normal, except now you don't need to catch an extra robot. A 3 cycle is slower than a 4 cycle, however if you want more runs you might want to consider trying to do this. Finally, if you are starting out and you still don't have Freya by the 4th or 5th cycle, it might be best to just wait and see if you can get it. The result is much slower, however you will be at the same point in the run as you would be at any other time. So if you are starting out, this might be a good option for you. So now we have the wind staff, we can move probably into the hardest part of the run, where you will do the tank skips or not. Both strategies start out the same, so just follow along for now, but I'll explain how to do both versions when we get there. Swap the ice staff for the wind staff that you just built, and run to gen 2, making sure that you are on a fresh round 7. And also making sure that you pat the Mauser when you leave the mound, if you are doing tank skips. If you are riding the tank then you won't have gen 4 on yet so obviously you cannot pap yet. Obviously if you played a 5 cycle and already have G strikes done then skip to this timestamp to find out what to do next. When you get to gen 2 get your 20 kills for G strikes and make sure that you are hitting gum to try and get self medication. You will need this very soon. The best way I find to fill G strikes without an insta kill is to buy a VMP off the wall and shoot a zombie about 2 times before knifing like so. After you have collected your G-Strikes, end the round and run through spawn to go to the fire tunnel. Now that we're on round 8, the Panzer should spawn right outside the wind tunnel as the portal is building, so you can quickly kill him with the wind staff and collect the part later. Here is where we will split up depending on the strategy that we're running. I'll first explain the tank skip strategy. 
As soon as you get into the crazy place, build the portal, collect the fire crystal, and complete the wind puzzle. Leave the crazy place and pick up the ground from fire, and also the fire staff panzer piece as you are leaving. Head to this area, because from here we're going to do the first tank skip. This tank skip is done in two parts, getting up onto the ledge, and then getting into the staff piece area. To get up onto the ledge, we want to jump and shoot behind us to push upwards. We don't want to spam our boom holder as this will put us too high and we'll fall too hard onto the ledge and slip off. So jump and shoot behind you about three times I find is best, like so, to get onto the ledge. From here, you're going to look around here, jump and shoot as fast as you can to push yourself into the staff piece area. When you get up, run up to the scaffolding to disable the death barrier and collect the staff piece like so. If you down, the electric cherry effect should kill a zombie and revive you instantly to prevent you from game overing, hence the need for self-medication. Run up the tank path towards Gen 4, shoot the wind bulb and make sure that you have the lightning disc. Go to the sandbag area and make this jump here. Now, the way that you do this is by getting as much height as possible. Some people find that sliding into it is easier, whereas some people find that simply running and jumping is easier. If possible, you want to jump from around here and aim to land on this area. When you do jump, make sure that you shoot behind you with the boom holder to push you onto the tank path. If you suck at doing this, you can always bite the bullet and run to church normally. Doing the skip this way is obviously faster, but it allows you to get the Maxis drone piece if it's on the tank path. This is very important since we don't really have an opportunity to get it later. So if you do run through church and you don't have the Maxis drone piece, make sure that you check if it's there before going to the Gen 5 tank path. When you get to church, turn the lightning dial and call the tank. If you are not confident in doing this next skip, then it might be better for you to call the tank after doing the skip and getting the second lightning staff piece. Run to this area and similar to other skips, you want to run, jump and shoot behind you. Jumping later is better here, as you will slide up the wall easier. I usually try and use this area as my marker to run at to make the jump easier. After you have made the jump and got the part, call the tank if you haven't already and run up the tank path. Shoot the wind bulb and collect the Maxis drone piece if it's there. Run around and jump on the tank and get the last lightning piece and shoot the last wind bulb. You could shoot it from up top like so or just run it down and hit it after you got the piece. End round 8 and head to the mount to complete our first staff dupe of the run. If you intend on doing this strat then skip to this time in the video for your next Next steps. If you don't want to do tank skips, then the next part is for you. If you are not tank skipping, then this part is for you. Go through the fire portal, collect the fire crystal, and open the portal at ice, and this is where you'll be leaving from. Do the wind puzzle whilst the portal is opening and leave through ice. From here, jump on the tank and send it and run ahead of it like so. Whilst the tank is going, do gen 4 and shoot the wind bulb there. When you've done all of this, the tank should just be passing by like so. It's important that we chase after the tank, but do not actually get on it straight away. The longer that you ride the tank, the longer the cooldown. Hop on the tank around here and get the lightning piece. Drop down, grab the firegram and panzer piece if you haven't already, and run through spawn to gen 2. Hop on the tank again and ride it for the entire section, grabbing both lightning pieces on the way. After you have got the third lightning piece, shoot both wind bulbs, end the round, and head to the mound making sure that we have self med in hand. This is where both strats link back up to the same spot again. At this point in the run, we should have all three lightning staff pieces and self medication in hand, the wind staff all but upgraded, and also the fire staff gem. When we go down into the mound, turn the dials to yellow and shoot the wind orb. What comes next is extremely important. 1. Build for fire staff but do not pick it up, as we will use this later. 2. Swap your wind staff for the ice staff and then down yourself and revive yourself with self med. For the next 10 seconds, quick revive will revive you despite the fact that you have already revived yourself with self med. During this time, no zombies will target you and the properties of quick revive on solo, self medication and mule kick allows you to duplicate staffs and also hold two staffs at a time. During the time where quick revive is reviving you, swap the ice staff for the wind staff and hold out your non 
one mule kick weapon that isn't the boom hilda this might be an rk5 a vmp or any other gun that you have traded the rk5 for the result of this will be the game giving you back the ice staff that you downed with along with the wind staff that you picked up secondly because you originally downed with an ice staff there is now a duplicated ice staff in the mound that we will use later in the run so one more time since i know it's confusing one build for fire staff and shoot the wind orb two swap the wind staff for the ice staff three down yourself four trade the ice staff for the wind staff and five hold out your non mule kick weapon likely an rk5 or a vmp and it should look like this As we leave the mound, kill anything you see without slowing down, as we want to thin the round but not end it yet. We're going to the lightning tunnel this time to transfer both the eyes and the wind staffs at the same time. Whilst building the portal, end the round. The zombie may have spawned up at gen 5, and the round end here can be really annoying. Alternatively, you can wait for the spawn inside of the crazy place and end the round there. When we end the round and flip to round 10, we get a Templar round, which we will need to deal with. So after transferring both the Ice and Wind Staffs and also grabbing the Lightning Staff gem, exit through the Lightning Portal, making sure that we pick up the Gramophone and make our way over to where the Templars are to deal with them. Gen 1 temps in this situation is pretty terrible, and if you're playing for a time near the world record, it's essentially a run killer. But for other generators, we can use the G-Strikes to kill them. Here are some lineups that I use, and if you want to practice, practice fees, then the practice tool has a patch to do so, link down below. After the Templars have been dealt with, we're going to duplicate the staffs again. This time, both Fire and Lightning, and we're going to upgrade both of them at the same time. It's very important that we buy a war weapon on the way to the mound here so that the staff troop can work. A few options of guns you can buy are the HVK in the Lightning Tunnel, the MAA-7 on the top of the mound, or the Tommy Gun on your way into the mound. We should have one charge left of our self-med from earlier. You might have two left if one, the death barrier for the first lightning piece didn't hit you, or two, you didn't do the tank skips. Regardless, we will only need for one charge. Turn the dials to either red or purple, whichever is more convenient, and follow these steps. One, grab the fire staff. Two, down yourself and revive yourself with self-med. Three, while in the quick revive, revive state, build the lightning staff and swap the fire staff out for it. And four, hold out the wall weapon you bought until QR revives you. The result of this will be you holding both the fire and lightning staffs at the same time. For this entire next section until the final staff upgrade, you'll want to be cycling gum and setting up a gum cycle for the end of the game. Getting nukes ready for the second set of Templars is almost necessary. These Templars will come in on either round 13, 14 or 15. Secondly, we'll need another self-med for the fire staff skip later in the run. If you get self-med early before nukes, you'll probably have to hold it. End around and head over to the wind tunnel where we'll place the gramophone down for the final time, and this is where we will leave the gramophone for the rest of the game. You want to try your best not to kill anything here, as you need 32 of the 34 zombies in the round for the fire staff souls. Throwing a G-strike inside the tunnel is a good way to keep zombies off of you whilst you wait for the portal to build. As soon as you get into the crazy place, head over to the fire area and fill up the cauldrons. This takes 32 kills. When it's done, end the round and open up the ice portal ready to leave. Whilst it's building, go to the lightning area and do the lightning puzzle. 
If you're fast at this, you should have about 10 seconds spared to make the portal. As you do the puzzle and make your way to the portal, kill any zombies in your way. You want to kill around 7 to 8 zombies at least in order to fully upgrade both the ice and wind staffs. Whilst in church, complete the fire staff code and go to the mound. All you're doing in the mound here is spinning dials to shoot both orbs and upgrade both staffs whilst ending the round. We will use the zombies on the next round to upgrade the final staffs. We should now be on our way to the wind tunnel and also be on round 13, which is a potential Templar round. If we get Templars here, we're going to have to nuke slash kill them. Round 13 temps are simply just bad. You can actually pre-nuke Templars since they spawn before any zombies and kill them with without nuking any zombies. If you nuke on the second to third tick of the round change music like so, Perhaps these unknown forces seek to help us. then you can nuke all Templars without killing any zombies, although the window for this is very tight. Whilst going to the wind tunnel, dig anything that's in your way and try and get a zombie spawn from it. This is because on round 13, we have 39 zombies when we need 40 zombies for the staffs. If we dig a zombie and despawn him by going into the crazy place, then we're able to fill all 40 souls in one round, meaning we can negate the round change and negate the final kill that we need on round 14 for the staff upgrades. Upgrade the final staff staying in the fire area since we want to upgrade the fire staff first. Once again, it's extremely important that we buy a wall weapon after placing both staffs down to upgrade. This could be a Vesper or an STG which are both in the crazy place. During the round flip, assuming we didn't dig a zombie up, open the wind portal ready to leave with the upgraded fire staff in hand as our mule kick weapon. We will be leaving every other staff in the crazy place. Get the final kills you need to upgrade the staffs and leave through wind. Again, if we get Templars we need to deal with them so nuke them if you have nukes. From here we'll start the ending. The ending consists of filling boxes around completing other steps such as the Ascent from Darkness or AFD as we call it, and also Rain Fire. Now, depending on our time, we can do a different amount of boxes in order to catch certain Rain Fire cycles. In most cases, we will be filling three boxes before catching the first cycle of Rain Fire, and I'll walk you through it now. Leaving the wind tunnel, make sure you build the Maxis drone there and head your way over to Gen 4 box. We'll be filling this one first. Each box takes 30 kills, although sometimes it will take slightly more. If you kill zombies at the exact same time as each other, they will only count for one soul instead of multiple. Fill the box and hit gum at opportunistic times. This could be before starting Gen 4 box, although this is risky, or after you fill the box at the end of the round. We're looking for another charge of self-medication if you do not already have one, and we need this ready for the start of round 16. Assuming we are playing a free box rain fire strategy, make your way over to the church box, and again, fill the box, hitting gum if you need to. End the round and make your way to the mound with self-med in hand. Again, if you don't have self-med yet, you can hit gum at the mound before staff duping to get one. From here, make your way down to the mound where we'll complete Black Ops 3's version of the fire staff glitch. These steps are once again very precise and some things need to be done in pretty quick succession. 1. Place the fire staff in the AFD pedestal in the mound and pick up the new one from its original holder. Visually, it will look like it isn't there but you can walk up and pick it up. The reason it's there is the same reason the eye staff is there, because we downed with it earlier when duping staffs. 2. After picking up a new fire staff, do not place it. Instead, run up to the Tommy gun wall by and down yourself. 3. Whilst you are reviving, swap your non-mule kit gun out for the ice staff. This will either be a Vesper or an STG. As soon as you have picked up the ice staff, hold out the Tommy gun. When QR revives you, you will be given back a fire staff. The window to do this is very tight, so you have to be fast. 4. Down yourself again, and after self-med has revived you, place a fire staff in the pedestal. We should now have 2 out of 4 staffs placed. 5. When quick revive revives you again, down one last time, and again, place the fire staff in the pedestal. 6. When quick revive revives you for the final time, place the fourth and final staff in the pedestal. You will now have successfully done the fire staff glitch and skipped the ascend from darkness sequence. So one last time. One, place fire staff. Two, run up to the wall by, down. Swap your STG slash Vesper for the ice staff and hold out the Tommy gun. Three, down yourself and place the fire staff. Four, down yourself and place the fire staff again. Five, place the final fire staff after fully reviving. Here's how it plays in full speed.
throw a G-Strike in the mount so that you are able to leave safely without killing any zombies. Ideally, we are able to fill a third box here, being the one outside the mount. The robots at this point in the game can spawn at around XX45. If I'm running up the spiral stairs out of the mound at this time, I know I can just about fill the box before the trio robots come through and step on my box. This way, I'll still be able to catch rain fire. Fill the box and hopefully get the correct robot foot so that we can rain fire. Unfortunately, you are just playing a one out of three here. If you are fast enough, you can pre-throw a G-Strike onto the hole before going into the robot and pressing the red button so that you can immediately throw the Maxis drone inside when you get out the robot like so. These are two angles to do so for each foot. The idea here is to complete Rainfire, kill the Panzers, and also fill the final box at Gen 5. Optimally, we get a natural zombie blood here so that we can shoot down the pilot. If we don't, then luckily we have the eye staff in hand, so we can shoot the chariots of fire and get a free zombie blood. Shoot down the pilot and make your way to Gen 6 to get your Thunder Fists. Make sure that you either end the round at Gen 5 or whilst getting Thunder Fists so that you have a fresh round ready for the fist upgrade in the mound. Before we do White Fist, there's one more thing to keep in mind. Throughout these rounds, it's possible you get another Templar round. All generators must be turned on by the time you pick up the upgraded Maxis drone from the Zombie Blood pilot. A generator could be being turned off, but as long as it hasn't been fully turned off, you are fine. If a generator fully turns off before you pick up the Maxis drone from the pilot, then you'll have to turn it back on or you will not get the ending cutscene required for the end time. Go to the mound and upgrade your fists and either when you get there or when you're about to leave, grab the fire staff from the bottom of the mound. Without this, you will not be able to complete the 100 kill ending. Finish your white fist or fist upgrade, whatever you want to call it, and make your way to the crazy place one last time, making sure you 1. have the fire staff and 2. pick up the Maxis drone from the wind tunnel. Raindrops is extremely useful in this situation, so anytime after AFD, hitting gum to get raindrops is almost always beneficial. Place down the fire staff in its holder and get the 100 kills needed for the final step. This will take two rounds. Throw the Maxis drone up and interact with the beam to get the cutscene. And that is your final time. And that marks the end of the run, and of course the end of my tutorial. This run is extremely complicated and complex with a lot to learn, so I really try to go into as much depth as possible to help you guys really understand what you are doing to help you learn better. If you have any confusion with anything, don't hesitate to ask my Discord and ask for any help. And finally, let me know what map you want to see next. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one. Goodbye.